if you've experienced God's steadfastness and strength in your life somewhere along the road, say amen. amen. And if you believe God's word is true, please have a seat and pick up the Bible or your Bible app or look up at the screens as we walk into Psalm 23, the shepherd's psalm. And we shared on Sunday that this year at Nights of Worship, we're going to be doing some things differently, doing some new things and inviting people to engage in, in fresh new ways. And so we are going to, the psalm that we heard Kaya read, and I hope you're able to quiet your heart at the beginning of our time and listen to Psalm 23. Now you're going to get to declare Psalm 23. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to read a line of Psalm 23, and you're going to echo it back from your heart, from your soul. And as you read these words, as you declare these words, understand that this is in the first person. David wrote, the Lord is my shepherd. We're going to say together, the Lord is my shepherd. But as you say it, you're declaring it as a prayer. We're not just reading, we're declaring, all right? So I'm going to go portion by portion. Whatever I, whenever I stop, you pick up and bring the same thing back. But don't just echo it back to me. Declare it to God and declare it to the world. You ready? Okay, so I'll begin. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths. He guides me along the right paths. For his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever. 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 Amen. Amen. This is God's word. Isn't that powerful? You can, you can pray that. Yeah, pray. Thank God for his word. Amen. You, the Psalms don't just teach us to pray. They pray for us. They show us how to pray. They lead us in prayer. And this, this shepherd's psalm uh, comes in a certain setting. So what we're going to be doing this year is all through this year, we're going to pick a song from the Bible. Not all psalms. A couple of them are going to be psalms. There's other songs in the Bible that you don't even know are songs. They're, they're hidden in different parts of the Bible. We're going to be bringing those out, and we're going to be singing, declaring, learning from, just diving into these songs from Scripture. And so I want to give you some, 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 just some background. So every song has a setting. Every song comes out of a setting. This one comes out of the fields, out of the pastures. The setting is David being a shepherd and looking at where he is. Every song has a singer. And in this case, the singer is David. He's a young boy in his family whose job is to take care of the sheep. So, you know, there weren't child labor laws back then. Six hours, eight hours, ten hours, two days, three days, out as a young boy taking care of the sheep. But he was a good shepherd. When he had a chance to stand against the giant Goliath, and nobody could imagine taking on this giant, David could. You want to know why? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours in the fields watching over the sheep and thousands and thousands and thousands of practice rocks shot like missiles against phantom creatures and against trees. In his hours and hours, he would practice and practice and practice. And then eventually they weren't just practices. There was a real bear or a real lion and he got so good that he could send that rock like a heat-seeking missile into the skull of a lion. And he'd done it. He was a good shepherd. So the one who writes this is talking to his good shepherd. 
But this David knows something about being a shepherd. Because as a young boy, he spent countless hours. Every song has a central message. And in this song, the central message is this. God is closer than you know he is. And he's watching over you. God is closer than you know. In those moments where in this crazy world you find a little moment of peace. Those moments in all that's going on where you can just find some, you know those moments where you can find just go, okay, for right now I'm okay. Kids, babies, stay asleep, you know. People, leave me alone. I just, I, when you get those moments, those calm waters, those green pastures, it's God who leads you there. He's there guiding you. He's bringing you into places that are peaceful, that are quiet. He's there in the highs and the lows, in the quiet moments and in the shadow of death. He's there when you're alone, and he's there when you're in crowds. Many of you know what it feels like to be in a crowd and feel alone still. But you're not alone ever if you know the good shepherd, if you come to Jesus. He's there when you want him to be near you, and he's nearby when you don't want him there. Those times where you're about to do something that you're saying, don't notice this, God. Don't see this, God. He's still there. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. And great songs, great songs can move a heart. You all have had songs you've listened to, whether they were sacred songs or hymns or praise courses or just a really good rock song well written. You all have had songs that you've heard and in the next week or two or month, you listen to it like 40 times. Raise your hand if you've ever liked a song so much, a worship song, any kind of, where you just like, you listen to it over and over and over. Am I the only one? Or, okay, yeah. And, and why? Why? Yeah, now you know the words. Now it's, because it just, there's something about a song that can move your heart. And the prayer is that this Psalm 23, this song of David would move your heart to understand I am never alone. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. In the quiet, cool moments, in the crazy, terrifying moments, in the shadow of death, he's my shepherd and I'm his sheep and he never leaves me alone. A great song can move your heart and the greatest of songs can transform your life. And God's songs are powerful because every one of the psalms, and every song, every song we're going to learn about this year, every song, we're starting with probably the most familiar song in the Bible. But we're going to look at some songs that you're going to go, I never heard that one before, or I never noticed that was a song. Some are longer, some are only one verse long. But every one of these songs we're going to look at this year is breathed by the Holy Spirit of God and is true from beginning to end. And if you let these songs get in your soul and get in your mind, they can transform your life. And so I'm going to give you an invitation before we pray through some parts of this psalm and make this a deep personal prayer. I want to give you an invitation to think deeply. And I'm going to give you four words or four thoughts. Some of you like to write notes and like to write things down. That's great. You don't have to, but you can. But here's, here's four thoughts that I want you to, just to, to ponder and to, to bring into your soul and bring into your heart. And these are things you can think about in the coming days and weeks as you think about Psalm 23. Okay. Think about how has your shepherd brought peace? Just think about how, how if my good shepherd caused me to lie down in green pastures by cool waters... How has God brought me peace? And when you think about that, you're going to start going, oh, this moment, this moment, this moment. In this situation where everything was turmoil, and I walked into it with peace. How? My good shepherd walked right next to me. I maybe didn't, maybe didn't notice him. Maybe I didn't even feel him there. But his arm was around me, and he was walking with me. How has your shepherd brought you peace? Think about this. How has your shepherd been present? How has Jesus, the good shepherd, been with you in a time of need? Think about that. Meditate on that. Celebrate the ways he's been with you. How has your shepherd provided? We live in a, a culture, in a place, in a time where we have so much that we can have three meals a week and a place to live and shoes on our feet and feel like we're poor. Spend some time in El Salvador, in the slums. Spend some time in India, where people were born with nothing and will die with nothing. Just, just we are, it's hard to have perspective, but to, to stop and say, God, you've provided. No, God hasn't provided. I don't have anything. How'd you get here tonight? Well, I don't even have a car. I had to, I had to take the bus. 
How'd you afford the bus? Oh, I gave him money. Ah, I got something. God's provided in big ways and little ways. Meditate on that. And the last question, how has your shepherd prepared a place? This psalm ends. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Remember when Jesus said, I'm going ahead of you to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you can be with me also. Remember that right now, the Lord of glory is preparing a place forever and ever and ever. Let's quiet our hearts. Let's go to prayer. And Lord Jesus, we pray together that as we grow to understand you as our good shepherd, we'll recognize that you are with us, you are near us, closer than we think, closer than we dream. Show your face in those moments that we can't see you, or at least let us feel your arm wrapped around us. Lord, there are some people here tonight, some people online tonight, that need to feel your presence, that need to be reminded that you are so close to them. There's some who feel like they're not sure where you are, and they don't recognize that you're right there. Just give them a nudge, give them a whisper. And Jesus, in this time of praying through Psalm 23, meet us in this time. Let's continue in prayer. I'm going to read a portion of this psalm and just give you a prompt to go into prayer quietly with you and the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Just think for a moment about the moment you felt God's hand lead you to quiet, peaceful places. Those moments you've sensed that he is with you, that he's given you rest and peace, that he's refreshed your soul. And just quietly in your heart right now, begin to thank him. But thank you for that time when you showed up. Thank you for that moment when you showed me your face. Thank you for the peace that you gave me when I don't know where it came from except for from you. Take a moment and thank him for how he's brought you peace and led you to quiet waters. Let him know that he's good. Let God know that you noticed he was with you, bringing you his peace. He delights to hear your voice, hear your prayers. Tell him thank you. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, David goes on to pray, and we can pray with him. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. What is a dark valley that you're facing right now? Or someone really close to you? is walking through dark valley and you're walking with them. You're walking arm in arm because you love them. So you're kind of in a dark valley time. And would you just pray right now, God, help me to fear no evil because you're with me. Help this friend of mine I'm walking with to fear no evil but to sense your presence. Lord, grant boldness and courage in the darkest of valleys. Just take a minute your valley or the valley of someone you love and pray for bold confidence, for fear to dissipate, to disappear and an awareness that you are not alone, that they are not alone. Talk to God about that for a moment.
as David comes to the end of this shepherd's song, he prays these words. Surely your goodness, he's speaking to the Lord as shepherd, to God Almighty. Surely your goodness and your love will follow me, will pursue me, will catch up to me again and again all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Would you just for a moment think about the hope of heaven, the price that Jesus paid to wash away our sins, to give us new life, to prepare a place for us, to cleanse us so that we could come and be with the Father forever. Would you thank him for the hope of heaven? Some of you tonight carry people in your heart who have died in faith in Jesus and you, you long for the day you'll see him again. Will you just thank God that one day you will see that child again, that parent again, that spouse again, that friend again in glory. Thank him for the hope of heaven, for what he's done to open the way. For those that are gathered with us tonight online, I'd like to invite you right now, if you haven't yet, just to go and get some crackers and juice, some bread, some wine, the elements for communion. If you're here in the worship center, as you came in, someone should have given you a little uh, worship cup there. And if you didn't get one of those, just raise your hand and we'll have folks come forward right now and begin to get those to you. And if you have that, would you just turn it to where the wafer is on the top? And just peel it open and put that wafer in one of your hands. And just hold that, thinking about the body of Christ, what he did for you. So peel it off and put that in one hand. And then turn it over the other way, take the top off so the juice is accessible. And then hold that in your other hand. So you have the wafer in one hand. And you have the cup in the other hand. And as we prepare to come to the table, we're going to read a passage from Scripture that isn't usually read at communion. But it fits tonight as we're thinking about God as our shepherd. So listen to these words from John chapter 10. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Therefore Jesus said again, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves, they're robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. shepherd the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep the hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep so when he sees the wolf coming he abandons the sheep and runs away then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it the man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep but I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. I know my sheep. My sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I lay down my life for my sheep. The hired hand. When the fire comes, when the creature comes, when the lion, bear comes, robbers come, he runs for the hills. Jesus stays and fights for his sheep. And the fight on the cross was a fight not with lions and robbers. It was a fight against hell and death and our sin. And he fought the fight to the end, to the death. And he died for us. So as we come to the table tonight, and those either online, you may be in your apartment or your home or I've talked to people that have actually said, I pulled to the side of the road 
because I was traveling and watching the service and I stopped for communion and just stopped on the side of wherever you are. Um, we love you and we're glad you're with us. We're not in the same room, but we're in the same spirit with Jesus. We're glad you're with us online and here on campus. But at the table, we remember that Jesus is the good shepherd who chose to lay his life down. Nobody took his life from him. Jesus said, I lay my life down, I take it up again. He chose to give his life for you and me. Remember that as we partake of communion tonight. As we partake in communion, we recognize that we're part of a bigger flock. Shoreline's a good-sized church, but you know what? There's churches all over Monterey County that believe in Jesus and believe the Bible. They're part of this family. They're part of his flock. There's churches all over the world. We're part of something so much bigger. So when we have communion, we're celebrating together, but we're remembering the bigness of God's family scattered around. And some of those folks are in different parts of the world online with us. We're part of a big family of God. And then as we come to the table, we celebrate that we hold in our hands and we take into our body these reminders of grace. The bread that we hold reminds us of God's love and grace and sacrifice. The cup that we hold that we're about to partake of reminds us of the price he paid. So prepare your heart and understand that when we come to the table, it's not because we deserve this amazing grace. We come knowing we don't deserve what he's done for us, but he's given himself. And so we say, thank you. This is our feast of thanks. This bread represents the broken body of our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth to live a pure life and to have his body broken for us. As we partake of this bread, let us remember his, his love, his sacrifice, and his gift, and the gift of eternal life that is available through our good shepherd. Let us partake of the bread together. The cup which we bless that we celebrate together is our communion with the shed blood of Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, who came and gave his life as the price for our sins. And Jesus sat with his disciples. He sat with broken, confused people, ordinary people, ragtag bunch those disciples but he said every time you do this remember me and then he told the church keep doing this until I come back again or until I bring you home so we partake of this cup remembering the price he paid and that by his blood we're forgiven and all who have called on his name now belong to him we are the sheep of his pasture we partake of this together in community so great that you laid down your life for us. We thank you that because of this we have an opportunity to, to receive that gift, your payment for our sins so that we may have eternal life with you. The greatest gift and the greatest blessing that we could ever have. Thank you as well for all of the other blessings in our life, big and small. May we have eyes to see how you've provided, how you protect, how you truly are our good shepherd. May we honor you with our lives in recognition of your love for us. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.